One of the great debates in watchmaking is whether to go automatic or hand wound. And today at the end of this film, I hope that we'll be able to make it easier for you to decide which way you should go. For many years now, I've had lots of friends asking me whether they should buy an automatic watch or whether they should buy a hand-wound watch. And of course, there are lots of different technical elements to it and there's lots of different design elements to it. And I'm very fortunate to have a dear friend of mine, Florian, here with me to discuss this and understand exactly what works best for you and your lifestyle. Florian, a pleasure to have you with me today. How are you doing? Thank you, Justin. I'm doing really well, thank you. I think it's best if we start firstly with what your role is, which department you work at here at IWC. Yes, of course. I'm actually a service watchmaker for the IWC department for complication watches. Give us an idea at the very basic level what the difference is between uh, an automatic and a handwire watch. So it's, it's actually quite simple. If you have like an automatic movement, you have a rotor which spins around in the back. And this movement of the rotor winds up the mainspring, which gives the energy for your automatic watch. So which means whenever you wear your watch, you move your arm, the watch gets wind up automatically, hence the term automatic watch. And on the other hand, you have the hand wound, which means you have to wind up your watch by hand to give it the energy. Technically as well, it's important for us to cover the, the differences in, in calibre uh, architecture, because of course with a, a winding rotor to power an automatic watch, you then have a thicker, typically you have a thicker a watch, whereas yeah. hand wound it's a bit thinner, no? Yeah, exactly. So if it, like from a watchmaker perspective, assembly wise, it's quite similar hand wound and automatic till you come to the automatic system, yes, for sure. So you insert the uh, automatic system and therefore you have more components and therefore your watch is normally a bit thicker. And you also have to be really careful, especially with the Peloton system, for, which is IWC known for, how to set the rotor at the right height. Because if you set it too low, it will scratch on the main blade. But if you set it too high, the whole system would be blocked. So yeah, this is like a really important point for the watchmaker. You, you touched on Albert Peloton, who was a key figure in the history of IWC here from a technical perspective. Just give us an idea of what that innovation looked like, why it's important, how it works um, from, a, from a watchmaking perspective. Yeah, so the idea of the Peloton is actually you have the round movement of the rotor and this system changes this round movement into like a back and forth movement. And then there's like two clamps which are integrating into a wheel and whenever it goes back and forth, the rotor is spinning it goes like tooth for tooth and winds up the watch like this. So you need less power than a normal mechanism. Yeah. And of course, you know, an automatic's great because you can wear it and use it and put it to the side for a day or two days maybe, put it back on and it's still working. Of course, with a hand wound, you know, there is a, a difference in how long you can leave it resting before you can put it back on and know it's working. Yeah, of course. So you're talking about the power reserve and for IWC, for example, you have the Calibre 59 with an eight day power reserve or the automatic movement 52 with a seven day power reserve. So that means if your watch is fully wind up, you can put it off your wrist, put it on the table, leave it unused and it will still run seven or eight days with that power reserve. So Florian, now you need to tell us what the key advantages and potential disadvantages are of automatic and hand-wound calibers? Yeah, of course. So on the automatic side, of course, it is as long as you wear the watch, it will run and it will wind up your watch. And also some people, they really like the movement of the rotor swinging. So they, they know like they, the watch is live or like it's breathing, kind of like. And of course, you have more components in an automatic watch, which makes it mostly a bit thicker. And on the other hand, the hand wound, it, it is a bit more time consuming because it always needs your attention. You have to wind it up by hand and you have to get in contact with it. So for some people it is cumbersome, but for most of the people they actually like it. They take it as a daily ritual to wind up their watch, to 
get in touch with the gear train and to feel it and just appreciate the watch way more. Florian, well, thank you so much for your time. An absolute pleasure to, to, to have you with us uh, today. Thank you, Justin. So there you have it, folks. The debate continues, automatic or hand-wound. We hope that the conversation today goes some way to providing some further insight as to which way you should go next.